The safeguard mechanism is something you're going to be hearing about a lot in the lead up to the election as both major political parties in Australia bicker over its role in reducing emissions. Safeguard sounds like a brand of toothpaste and in truth actually toothpaste would probably be more effective in cutting emissions from big business than this framework has ever been. The safeguard mechanism was designed by the coalition government and actually remember that because it makes the current war over it even more ridiculous. It was designed after the carbon price was repealed in Australia and replaced with something called direct action, which meant that the government would pay businesses and landholders directly to reduce their emissions. It's not called direct action anymore. It's referred to as something called the Emissions Reduction Fund. The ERF has three main bits a process to give carbon credits to emissions reductions activities like planting trees, a fund where the government buys those credits and claims the emissions reduction, and then the safeguard mechanism. The safeguard's meant to control emissions in certain areas of the economy by placing limits, or baselines as they're known, on the amounts of the greenhouse gases big businesses and industrial facilities emit. If they emit more greenhouse gases than they're allowed to, then they have to buy some carbon credits to offset their excess emissions. The safeguard mechanism captures 215 of Australia's biggest emitters in areas like mining, electricity, oil and gas production and manufacturing. If the safeguard was working, you'd expect emissions from these sectors to stay the same or even reduce. But in reality, emissions from those businesses have been increasing a lot. Any abatement delivered by the ERF was wiped out long time ago. Emissions in sectors covered by the safeguard mechanism grew from 89 million tonnes in 2005 to 143 million tonnes in 2020, which is around a quarter of Australia's emissions. So it's a lot. Most of this increase came from fossil fuel extraction. Remember that the safeguard mechanism is supposed to make those big emitters buy offsets? With such a massive increase, did those businesses have to buy offsets? Yes, yeah, sort of, but not really. Even though emissions increased dramatically, only 11 out of those 215 ended up having to buy carbon credits. This is because the way the baselines are set by the government is kind of wacky and it's negotiated between the government and businesses. So instead of setting a baseline based on historical emissions as a point of reference and businesses having to keep their emissions under that threshold, Baselines are based on emissions intensity and forecast production. So what this means is that an emissions baseline for something like a coal mine is set at how much pollution the company predicts is going to result per tonne of coal dug up, not overall pollution. A mining company can increase coal production and overall emissions, but get away with it by saying that each of those tonnes of coal will be slightly less dirty than before. It also means that they can overinflate their expected production and still come in under their negotiated baseline, even though emissions have increased. We have this system because businesses have lobbied government really heavily, arguing that if there were restrictions on how much they could pollute, then it would unfairly limit their production and profit. So to be clear, Australia's commitments in relation to climate are related to absolute emissions, not to efficiency or intensity, because there's an urgent need to reduce emissions in absolute terms. The climate actually doesn't care about good accounting or fairness for fossil fuel companies. What matters is every tonne of methane or CO2 coming out of the ground. All sectors need to play a part in the decarbonisation of Australia's economy. So where are we now? Well, there's an absurd battle between Labor and the Coalition over how the safeguard should be implemented. Labor's saying, yeah, we're going to implement the safeguard the way the Coalition designed it, and that's a good thing. And the government is saying, Labor's going to implement our own policy the way we designed it, and that's a bad thing. Safeguard actually could be a force for good by genuine, genuinely lowering baselines and holding businesses to account. Or it could simply allow industry to keep polluting with no penalty. Whatever happens, we know that every tonne of CO2 or methane in the atmosphere is contributing to climate change. And in its current form, the only thing the safeguard mechanism is safeguarding is the ability of businesses to increase their emissions. The bottom 20% uh, uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. 
It's no coincidence that we have a wages crisis in Australia. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas. 